Hey guys, I hope you're having an awesome week. Today I wanted to talk to you about five things that every beginner violinist needs to know. So let's get into it. All right, number one is it's probably gonna take you a while before you can produce a decent sound. And honestly, you might sound just pretty offensive for a while early on. It's probably gonna take you months, if not years, just depending on how often you practice, to sound decent. And I don't say that to discourage you, I just want you to know that you're gonna have to be patient with it. And don't worry, because we all start like this. You just honestly have to like get through that early phase where you sound disgusting, because that's just kinda how it is. It's a lot different than an instrument like the piano, for example, where if you're just trying to hit a note and be in tune, as long as that piano's in tune, if you hit the right note, then you're gonna sound decent. Whereas with the violin, you really have to be accurate as to where you're placing your finger on the instrument. There's no frets, so you just have to do this by muscle memory. And so it's really easy to be out of tune. And on top of that, you're also worried about your right hand in tone production and how you're drawing the bow across the string, because that's really what's gonna get you a nice tone versus a really gross tone. Number two is you need to be willing to invest a little bit of money here to get yourself set up with the proper equipment. We can do an entire video or multiple videos all about buying a violin, buying equipment, things like that. So just let me know in the comments below if you guys would like to see a separate video on that. But just in general, I think you need to spend at least a few hundred dollars in order to get a decent instrument. Besides the violin, you also need a bow, rosin, possibly a shoulder rest, maybe some other accessories too, and a case to put everything in. The risk of not spending at least a couple hundred dollars is that you're gonna get something that's so low quality that it's gonna be constantly falling out of tune. It might even be impossible to tune to begin with. The bridge might be too high or might just be like misshapen or something. So do yourself a favor and just spend a little extra money here. Don't just go for the cheapest option because it's a struggle enough to play the violin. You don't wanna be working against your equipment constantly. Now, if a couple hundred dollars sounds too expensive for you and that's out of your budget, a lot of music shops actually offer rental programs and especially rent to buy programs where you can kind of build some equity in an instrument. That's actually how I started out when I was younger. My parents rented an instrument for me. They committed for a full year and actually that's what kept me playing the violin to begin with because I wanted to quit so many times when I was younger because it was just so hard and I sounded so terrible that first year. But because we had committed to that one year rental, my mom was like, no, we're, we're keeping this. You're doing the full year. We're getting our money's worth out of this. Thanks mom for that. But that's an option too. So just know that you have a couple of different options there to get something of a decent quality. All right, number three is consistent practice is really key to good results. A lot of people have asked me, how long should I practice? And my answer is usually as long as you can commit to on a regular basis. So basically you'll see a lot better results if you even only have 10 or 15 minutes to spare every single day versus doing something I call binge practicing, which is where maybe you just practice once a week, but you're practicing for like two hours at a time. It's honestly gonna get you way better results if you can practice consistently. So even if it's just a small amount of time a day, that's better than doing a binge practice session. And don't worry if you can't commit to every single day or if you miss a day here or there, it's really not the end of the world. You just wanna try and stay as consistent as you can on a regular basis. It's really hard to stay motivated to practice. Honestly, we could do a whole video just about practicing and practice tips too. But that's why I think it's really important to always have at least one piece of music in your practice repertoire that you're really excited about practicing. I mean, for example, maybe something from like, oh, the Taylor Davis sheet music collection. <laughs> I mean, we have many volumes to choose from here, many favorites. And there's also my sheet music on my website if you wanna play originals. Also got covers on music notes, but uh, shameless plug there. But honestly, you do really wanna have at least one piece that you're excited about, even if it's not one of my arrangements. Okay. You just wanna think of that exciting, fun piece as kind of your musical dessert, you know, a little tasty thing at the end of your practice session to look forward to. <laughs> yeah, sorry. It is like a dessert, it oh, is. Like a musical could be a thin mint, yeah. <sighs> okay. All right, number four is that it's a really physically uncomfortable instrument to play, even if you are set up properly. Now you should never be in any real pain when you're playing the violin, but just know that it's a really unnatural position to be in, especially for a prolonged period of time. You also kind of want to think of it as a physical activity. So that's why it's important to take regular breaks during your practice sessions, because you don't want to injure yourself. And I know that sounds really silly because the violin is actually a really lightweight instrument 
it and the bow is like essentially a stick, so it's not exactly heavy lifting. But when you add a ton of repetitive motions in there and the fact that you're kind of doing an isometric hold with the way that you have to maintain your posture while you're playing, it does get very tiring and it can lead to some legitimate issues, so you just wanna be really careful there. I've personally had some serious neck issues in the past from playing the violin and now I can maintain it with regular massage therapy and I do my own foam rolling routines and things like that just to try and stay loose, like stretches, all of that stuff. And I take regular breaks during my practice sessions. Usually I like to go maybe 30 minutes, maximum 45 minutes, and then I'll take a five minute break and then get back to it. You generally never wanna go an hour or more without at least taking five minutes off. And then number five, violin is legitimately one of the hardest instruments, if not the hardest, <laughs> to learn, especially as a beginner. And I know all musicians wanna say, well, my instrument's the hardest, but honestly, with the violin, it is very true, especially in the early stages. We discussed some of the reasons why it's so hard earlier, but again, there's no frets on the instrument, so it's incredibly difficult to stay in tune. The spacing between your fingers is constantly changing as you move up the fingerboard. The speed of the bow, the pressure of the bow, the distance of the bow from the bridge all have quite an impact on your sound. There's a ton of different positions that you have to learn. I mean, there's just a ton going on. So just be patient with yourself. My whole point in saying this is not to discourage you, it's just to make you realize that it is gonna take a while to sound good and you don't wanna be hard on yourself because everyone starts out sounding pretty disgusting. So yeah, don't be hard on yourself and just know that even professionals have bad days and are insecure about their playing. I still have plenty of days where I'm just cringing throughout my entire practice session and just I'm like, what happened to me? Because it is one of those instruments where it takes constant maintenance and it's just hard even when you do get to a professional level. No matter where you're at, if you're a beginner or more advanced, the most important thing is that you're having a good time with it and that you're making some sort of progress. So there you go, guys. Obviously, there's more to know than just these five things, but I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know what other kinds of videos you'd like to see in the comments below. Also, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss my future uploads, and I will see you guys again soon in the next video.